Hello everybody, Just Biotech Geeks here. In continuation to the previous lecture on gel electrophoresis, this lecture would deal with its types. A short intro. This technique is used to separate DNA, RNA or proteins based on their size and charge. It is mainly employed in biochemical and molecular studies. With respect to the gel conditions, two conditions are seen. 1. Native gel and 2. Denatured gel. In the native gel electrophoresis, there is a non-denaturing condition so that the analyte's natural structure is maintained. We do not use a charged denaturing agent. It is mainly used to check for the enzymatic activity to verify the presence of the enzyme in the sample during protein purification and it's commonly used in proteomics and metallomics. With respect to the denaturing gel electrophoresis, it is where the condition that disrupts the natural structure of the analyte is given, that is, unfolding of complex structure into linear chain. Here, the charged denaturing agents are used. In the case of DNA, urea is used, and in the case of protein, SDS, sodium dodecyl sulfate, is used. Denaturing conditions are necessary for proper estimation of molecular weights of molecules. So here is how gel electrophoresis could be classified based on the types of gel used. It could be starch gel electrophoresis, agarose gel electrophoresis, or polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. Here, starch gel electrophoresis is kind of like the basic gel electrophoresis, where the gel material is starch along with petroleum jelly mixed in buffer. The gel is formed as a semi-solid gel due to intertwining of branch chain of amylopectin. Agar and agarose gel electrophoresis. Here, the gel is prepared using agar, which is a mix of polysaccharide obtained from seaweed, or agarose, which is a sulfate-free derivative of agar. This type of gel is usually used for DNA or RNA fragments. The materials used is less expensive, and horizontal electrophoresis is preferred. In this type, the pore size is determined by the concentration of the gel used. So, for example, a 2% gel is used for 0.2 to 1 kb fragments and 0.8% gel for 5 to 10 kb fragments. Here we could see the structure of agarose and final gel product. On the left side, we could see the molecules of the gel as in a solution state, and at around 45 degrees Celsius, the gel starts to solidify. After a period of time, the final gel structure is as on the right. So a big advantage of agarose is that we could remelt the gel after it solidifies. Many a times the excess gel in one gel run could be used in the next. With respect to the staining, ETBR is added during the casting process or if not, the gel after gel run could be immersed in gel red solution for 15 to 20 minutes. The advantages of using gel electrophoresis the advantages of using agarose gel electrophoresis is that we could prepare small concentrations of agar or agarose and absorption of negative particles is negligible. Sharp zones are obtained due to less absorption and no change in DNA structure at the end of the gel run is seen. The disadvantages are that electroosmosis is high and resolution is less when compared to polyacrylamide. The next type is polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, which is also known as PAGE. The gel is formed by polymerizing of acrylamide monomers by the presence of methylene bisacrylamide. So here is an acrylamide monomer, and on the right we have the polyacrylamide after polymerization of monomers. Polyacrylamide gels are tougher and are thermostable, transparent, strong, and chemically inert. Gels are uncharged and different pore sizes could be prepared. 
Usually, proteins are the analytes which are separated by the process of molecular sieving. And this is done based on charge to mass ratio and molecular size separation. Here is a depiction of how page is done. This is usually vertical electrophoresis. The gel is cast using the casting unit. Here, two types of gels are used. One is a stacking gel and the other is a running gel. The stacking gel allows the proteins to align them at a particular point before the gel run. This reduces the possibilities of proteins of different sizes having different starting points. Doing this ensures that our result would not be bad at the end. The electrodes are connected to the power supply and the gel is immersed in the buffer for the gel run. After the gel has run, the stacking gel is removed and the running gel is stained, usually using comase blue or silver staining. The main advantage of page is that the gel is chemically inert and it never binds to proteins. It is also transparent to light and stable to a wide range of pH, temperature and ionic strength. The disadvantages include longer time for preparation and difficulty in handling. It is also a possible neurotoxic compound, so it needs to be handled with care. With respect to the gel conditions discussed, page could either be native page or SDS page. In native page, the structure of the analyte is maintained. Here, separation is based on size, charge, and shape. Native page is employed for separation and purification of mixture of proteins. And this was the original mode of electrophoresis. Given below is an example of native page gel run. SDS page. SDS stands for sodium dodecyl sulfate, which is nothing but a denaturing agent. Its main purpose is to straighten and bring about a negative charge to the protein prior to the gel run. So proteins could be positively charged, negatively charged, or could contain both charges based on the alkyl group present in each amino acid. For an easy process, the proteins are made to become linear in structure. So SDS unravels the proteins into its primary structure and brings about a negative charge throughout. The SDS is added to the gel during its preparation. The gel is run and now staining could be done. This is then examined in a gel doc. 2D gel electrophoresis. 2D gel electrophoresis is a very important technique to separate and assess proteins based on their size and charge. There are two factors that need consideration, the isoelectric point and the protein mass. An isoelectric point is defined as the pH at which a molecule carries no net charge or it is electrically neutral. The first step is to run the sample protein on a strip and this is the first dimension run. This step involves the isoelectric focusing of proteins to their particular point. This process is carried out for around 17 to 72 hours. The second dimension of the gel run involves the separation of proteins based on the mass to charge ratio. This is achieved by applying an electric field perpendicular to the first run, keeping the strip on the STS polyacrylamide gel. This attracts the proteins to the positive side of the gel, and they are separated based on their size or molecular weight throughout this process. This process takes about 6 hours and the gel is stained and viewed. So that's all for the types of gel electrophoresis. Do stay tuned for future lectures. Do subscribe to our Telegram channel for free softwares, notes and reference books. The link is in the description.